Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn. And Jinx here. And welcome to Humankind on the PlayStation 5. So this is a turn-based strategy game that's very similar to the Civilization series, though with some major differences. I did cover it on the PC, and it has finally made its way to console. So I very much enjoyed the series on PC, but I didn't play it much after that because I was waiting for the expansions that never really came. They had one major DLC for this, and uh, just the, the post-development support for it has been really lacking. So I'm hoping with the console version out, we'll start to see some more content produced. Uh, but I, I did enjoy my couple campaigns with it, and I did start one here on the console version. Just went to turn 34 to learn the, the basic controls since they are different from the PC. You know, they changed the UI so that it fits well with the controller. Now this game is $49.99 on the PlayStation Store that is in US dollars. There's also a like deluxe edition that has the few DLC that have been released, like some cultural packs and stuff like that. Uh, so I think it's like two new cultures and a couple other things. Uh, and you could pay an extra 10 bucks for that. We did not. This is just the base version here. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into a new game. I've already got it all set up, guys. What's really nice about this game is it does remember your last settings. So we've got 10 total empires here. And that includes our own. You do get to design your character, which I guess I can take a look at that real quick. You dude looks like a goldfish over there gasping for air. <laughs> yeah, I see that. So you got asthma? Yes, <laughs> he does. So I tried to make him look as close to me as I could outside of the fact that he's not completely bald. And that's only because the, the bald head looks kind of weird in this game. That's a lot of customization, though. Yeah, for something that, I mean, it doesn't matter that much. But it is uh, basically your face in the game. And you'll constantly see your character, you know, during diplomacy. Just wanted to show you guys the options that are available here. So yeah, you get to customize your character. And then these are all, you know, either historical or mythical characters. I don't want to mess with this too much because I don't want to mess up our settings here. But, you know, we got like Beowulf or, you know, Boudicca. And each of these has their own difficulty settings. So you can see that Boudicca is advanced. There's also novice leaders and, it, and then uh, expert leaders. I don't think we have any experts here because I find that they move too far beyond the rest of the AI countries. And then, uh, you know, I don't believe we have too many novice ones either, maybe one. And the rest of them are all advanced, it's so kind of mid-range. In addition to, you know, each one of these personalities having their own difficulties, there's also another AI difficulty that we'll see in the settings here. But yeah, they all play a little bit different. And you can take a look at those as you do your game setup. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and play on a huge world. And I believe this should all be already set up to, to the one I had done in my test playthrough. We're going to do the, the chaotic continent shape. I always prefer those. We got 50% land percentage, four continents with one of those being a new world. So it'll be completely empty for colonization. Let's kind of go through these so you guys see how we've got it set up. Most of it is normal, standard, average stuff. We are going to play on the slower pace. I played on the normal pace for my PC series and I regretted it because while we were able to complete it, it just feels like it moves through the periods too fast. So we're going to have it on slow. That might result in us not actually getting all the way through the game, you know, towards the, to the end of the campaign, but I just feel like it's much better pacing overall. We've got the default end conditions. There's multiple victory types. So these are all the ones available here. And then we have the pollution effects off, because if I recall correctly on the PC, it, it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't something you really wanted to have on, it didn't really feel all that smooth, kind of caused problems. They might have fixed it since then though. As far as our overall difficulty, we're, we're on the nation setting. So Hamlet is the very easy, town is easy, um, Metropolis is the normal setting. So this is where the AI doesn't have any particular limits or bonuses. And you are right, he does look like a fish over there. He does. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason why I'd suggest to play at least on this, you know, if you're at all familiar with these style of games, is you'll see down there at the bottom, 
that the AI opponents will maximize their potential fame gains before changing eras. That's important because what will end up happening is if you're on any of these lower settings, then they just move to the next stage as soon as they can, which results in them getting less fame, which helps you win the game, and that's the reason why they do that. However, that means that they'll get to pick their cultures first. There's a limited number of cultures. You got to see what I mean by cultures. And so they get to pick their cultures first, which leaves you less options because they just move to the next stage as quickly as they can. While with the nation setting or above, they'll try and maximize their potential fame. So they'll wait to move to the next era. And that'll give you some time to, you know, collect fame. Basically, they play the way that a player would play. And so it just results in a, a much smoother pace. Because I feel like with these lower settings, you feel rushed to move to the next stage so that you don't get left out and don't uh, have any options for picking cultures. So if you're at least familiar with these type of games, I would suggest you do the nation. But there are more difficult settings if you so desire. So are you ready to hop into this, Jinx? Yeah. So Jinx has not played this before. I've told her all about it. But she has not played yet since she generally doesn't play PC games. She only plays on console. And so she does like Civilization. I do love Civ. Jinx plays the hell out of Civilization. So I'm excited to show her, to, uh, show the game to her. Excited to show you guys it. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a cutscene here in the beginning. And uh, they kind of have like a much lighter tone. But yeah, we'll watch this cutscene and then we'll get started. Our universe contains infinite stories most of which are about rocks and ice at sub-zero temperatures in a vacuum. Rather boring. However, on a small damp rock, there is a story that bears a second look. It's your story. But the first four billion years or so mostly concern amino acids. Not much of a page to you. But then, over time, the amino acids bond together and things start to get interesting and a bit drier. A certain subspecies of hominid discovers that you can do more with a sharp rock than annoy your little brother. Tools and weapons are invented. The hominids begin to cooperate. Fire becomes a servant rather than an unpredictable force of nature. They learn to tan the skins of animals for clothing. They learn ways to record and probably exaggerate their adventures. Eventually, these tribes learn to build shelters and immediately hold the first barbecue parties. This is the dawn of humankind. Struggle and cooperation have been rewarded. The Neolithic era draws to a close. The whole world beckons. This tribe has come far, but the rest of their story is your story. You are the one who will build them into a great civilization. How far will you push humankind? A new era, a new epoch. While your tribe looks to you for leadership, the weight of all those future, unborn generations also weighs upon your decisions. What sort of lives will they have? All right, so we're into the game. It's a little bit of science there for Jinx. I love science. And uh, you notice that I did cut out that loading screen. The, the first time loading, I don't know about uh, subsequent loading, you know, when you're going back into your game, but the first loading does take a while, a lot longer than I would expect for a game on PlayStation 5. So yeah, we did cut that. But what's interesting about this game when you compare it to Civilization or pretty much any other game that I've seen uh, of this genre is that you start out in, with this nomadic tribe in the Neolithic era. And so you won't have a, a city for a little while. Oh, really? You just wander around? Yeah, you just wander around as this tribe, collecting food and, and research and stuff. And I really like this period. It allows you to explore the map for a little while and figure out where you want to actually settle down. Oh, yeah, that is nice, because most games you're just, like, in, in a rush to get your first city chosen so that you're not behind in production. Yeah, so you might move a little bit, like, to get your, your settlement on a river or something that's close by, but for the most part, wherever you're starting, that's where you need to settle. Uh, but with this game, you're not going to set up that city for, for a while. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and start by moving this tribe uh, over to this location. 
and we'll get a little point in science. Even those who have disappeared may have done something very clever. And so you'll notice that we have uh, up there in the, the top left of the screen, we have these three different sections here. And so this game is, is much different than Civilization in, in the way that you earn fame, and that's how you win the game. And you can get fame from a variety of different ways. We'll look at this more as we play. Uh, but here in the Neolithic era, there's three ways to get fame, and this will kind of set you up for success in the beginning, kind of put you ahead in points and also give you some other benefits. And so those three things that we need to do is one, find those science points. You can see it's two out of 15, that's what we currently have. The one to the left of the science, that's how many units you have. So if you get seven units, then you accomplish that fame goal for this era. And then the one to the right of it is battling uh, animals. So once you win seven battles with animals, then you accomplish that goal. To be able to move out of the stage, you have to accomplish one of those three goals but you can keep playing it to accomplish all three in order to get more fame. So yeah, let's go ahead and finish moving our units. And they'll be ending our turn, which you press, press square to do that. So far, the controls are pretty decent uh, for the, the controller. I've had a few complaints, but it, it's, it's not bad. It's not the worst I've ever seen for a strategy game coming to the console, but certainly not the best either. So this location here, this is food. Delicious. Though next time, it might be better if you washed it first. So you'll notice that here in the uh, little panel, we have another tribe growing. And so we now have five of 30 food to grow this next tribe. Is it a baby? Yes, basically it's some babies. We need to feed these babies <laughs> in order to create another unit here. So we want to try and create as many units as possible. One for that that fame goal of getting the seven units, and two, because we can then have that unit explore the map and do this a little bit faster. And they also get their own little, you know, baby growing. And so we wanna make sure that we are, we're gathering all this food here. Need to eat all the berries the land has to offer. Yeah, we're gonna eat all the berries. Now we, we talked about the fact that you can fight animals and they will not only help you accomplish that goal of doing the uh, the battles with the the animals, but they'll also feed your your people as well. Since obviously you're getting you're getting meat. All right, so we have twenty at thirty. Now I've noticed up here there's already some goodies that we're definitely want to get. I'm seeing copper and some ponies, and so we'll probably want to start you know basically exploring up there with our second unit but we need to get a second unit first, obviously. So let's see, these are cliffs. You can't move up or down these. Overall, I find the map in this game to be a bit more tactical than in the Civilization series, which I really like. Yeah, it seems like the units decide to follow along the terrain a little differently than other strategy games like this. I find the terrain to be much more attractive in this game as well. So we just got that 30 food. And so therefore, we now have a second uh, tribe member here. Now, we won't be able to uh, move them just yet. Uh, this is another thing that's different from Civilization, is you get all these events where you make these choices. I really like these. Uh, so did you want to read this first event for us, James? In the distance, a thin cord of smoke cuts up into clear blue skies, fire. Calling a few tribesmen, you run closer. The smell of cindered bark and burning pine growing stronger with each footfall. You spy dancing flames and suddenly find yourselves on the edge of a settlement on fire. Many of the structures are ablaze, but even with the smoke and flames, you can see these abodes are marvels of craftsmanship. You're about to direct your men to put out the fires with loose soil when you see short, shadowed figures running away. Use. They could become part of your tribe if you give chase now, but that would mean losing these secrets of construction. What is your choice? So if we give chase, then we're going to get a new hunting party that will be called refugees. Basically, it's another unit. Or we can extinguish the, the flames here and, and learn about the buildings, and we'll get a negative 25% on city defense research. So basically, we'll be able to research that tech quicker. And while I do like tech, I think it's really useful to have another unit here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give chase and get another tribe member. we got to save the children. And so now we have three. 
And so that's pretty helpful because we're going to go ahead and move these guys up north to explore that territory. And I think this is all cliffs here, so we actually do need to go around this way. Oh, wow, these are all cliffs. Very interesting uh, terrain situation here, guys. Yeah, so it would actually be better to go around that way. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll have them start walking over there. They've got a long walk to go. All right, so they'll do their thing. Well, these two are going to split up over here. This little group over here. And so the way you get access to this tab is by pressing circle. Not exactly what you'd expect. You click on the unit, then you have different options here. You also have the options up along here. So just kind of hover over these so you can see all the different things we can do here. We can rename our units, which that's super important in any of these games, of course. But yeah, we click on the unit and then we transfer them to have them go to a different location. All right, so let's have these guys go down south. Although, More cliffs. Yeah, there's a lot of cliffs in this area. And then we'll have these guys move over and get this food here. And we're already working on our next baby jinx. We found nuts. <laughs> I guess we all know <laughs> nuts is how you get more babies. I mean, it is. Mm -hmm. They're pretty important. Key part of the recipe. Did they make food as they left or they just walked by it over there? Where? <laughs> they uh, kind of just reappear. Oh, okay. Because I guess we're going through many seasons and so it's like the food's growing, you know? Gotcha. Now we have not found much science yet. That's unfortunate. Hoping we find some. We have found our first animals though. And so I think we're going to battle these, these elk here. So you get the preview, shows you that we are stronger. And the dark blue here shows us the areas where we'll be able to deploy, while the light blue shows where they'll be able to deploy. And terrain is very important. Unlike civilization, we actually fight this down on the map. And it's one of my favorite parts of this game, and one of the ways it differs the most from civilization. Now you can change which way you attack from, but we won't be able to do that way. But let's say you want to attack this way. You'll see that the battle would be different. Oh, okay. Or if we wanted to go this way, again, the battle's different. And so you need to consider how you want it to be. This is, a, is definitely the best way to do this, guys. I can't tell if we're on a cliff, though, and if we'll be able to attack. I don't think so. It looks cliffy, though. I think we should be good up here. All right, so we want to manually fight this out. I found out all my battles here, guys. And then we're going to want to select these guys and just probably move them here. We're going to get a bonus for being up high. And so we don't want them to get up here because I think those are two cliffs, so they can't get up here. And so we're done with our deployment. So let's go and end it. All right, so he's over there. So we do not want to come off the cliff. We're attacking, so we get the first turn. But we don't want to come off the cliff and give up our, our bonus from our little hill here. So we're just going to set up to defend. That also gives you a bonus. And we saw this in the PC series. It's easily exploitable. The AI cannot help itself. Whether it's deer or, you know, tanks or, you know, spearmen. The AI cannot help itself. It has to attack every turn. <laughs> even if it's not in its best interest to attack. But it will. And so you can take advantage of that. And, uh... Yeah, you can defend and then it will attack you and you get that bonus. But you'll notice up there at the top, it shows the bonuses we're getting. We're getting a plus four from high ground. So the terrain is important here, guys. And so we're going to go ahead and do this attack and we'll be close to killing it. And then again, because it can't help itself, I mean, it's got to go after us. <laughs> yeah. And so we won that battle. And so now you see that for our, our little fame there with the little animal paw, We've got one of seven, so we've won one of seven battles against these oh-so-dangerous animals. So there's another one over here, so we'll probably do that battle as well. And while I know this does take a while... Oh, somebody's already settled over here. See that pink? Mm -hmm. We have neighbors. We got neighbors, Jinx. Yeah, I know it takes a while to do all the battles manually, but I generally do unless it's like a for sure really easy, easy win. 
You just can't trust the AI. You can't trust the AI. Yeah. Where'd he set up? In the mist. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see him anywhere. Where'd he go? Yeah, he must be over there in that in those forests. So we're just gonna go ahead and defend. Only in other realms. Oh. Defend, and then he'll come charging up the hill. Because <laughs> of course he did. And so yeah, we'll get that height bonus. And this is all helping us out here. So one more attack should be enough here. Or one more defense, I suppose. But you can see that they do pay attention to train. So you saw he moved up to the high point so that he wouldn't have, which I don't know how the deer knew that, but... He's smart. There we go. Uh, we did get an event here. Let's take a look at it. I might have to close this first. Maybe it's this here. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Dry grass. We're going to go explore it, I guess, once we... uh. Get to the next turn. I suppose we'll go back for the food. I think it's worth it. Maybe it wasn't. It was only five. <laughs> and then we'll have uh, them just set up to go over to that location. So does not everyone start out as a nomad? Everybody does. So what we can do once we... The problem is we have not found any of that science. So every time we find that science, we get a little bit of those influence points, which are those purple stars. Mm-hmm. And so with those influence points, you can set up outpost. Though those aren't cities, you can't build anything there, but basically you're claiming the land. And that's what she has done here. Because I think this is uh, a female ruler here. And so she has claimed the land. But an outpost can be destroyed. They can be ravaged. And what's interesting is that we can actually fight each other in this period. Our tribes can without like declaring war or doing diplomacy or anything like that. Another deer. Another deer. elk. Yeah, elk in the same locations. Of course, we're going to battle it. Because what else would we do here? And we're again going to go ahead and move to the same location here. Enter deployment. So as you can see, there's a lot of button presses to do a lot of this stuff, guys. So that's one of my issues. It's a small issue, but... Yeah, there's a lot of button presses just to do little things. Like moving through the menus and stuff. Yeah. Alright, so there should just be one more round here. It'll tack up the hill. And then that might be enough food here for us to get another tribe. Uh, looks like we're just short. Soon. So in this playthrough, we're getting a lot of food, but not much science. But that's what this location is. This is science. So you notice when we got that, we got three science, and then we got that influence. And again, that influence is important. It's what is going to allow us to set up these outposts that she has already set up. So we got to figure out where we want to set up our first outpost. Because outposts are what you turn into cities. Or attached to cities. Like, how did she find so much science? I don't know. She just got lucky. Sometimes you find a lot of science. Do we have to move through the elk to get to that? Yeah. So this sanctuary here, uh, the sanctuary, you know, it has that peace sign. Mm -hmm. It spawns peaceful animals. So the elk. Oh, okay. Or the uh, the mammoths. There's another science right there. And then there's. Also, I forgot what they're called. I think but, I saw it. The lair. Yeah, the lair. Yeah, you saw when I was playing earlier. Uh, that will spawn the more aggressive animals, like the bears. So yeah, we'll go ahead and fight this. And the reason why we want to take that sanctuary, well, a good thing about it is it spawns animals for you to fight. If you raid it, you get some bonuses. So we're going to want to do that. So let's do this manual battle. I'm not seeing any location that would be better to deploy to, so we're just going to enter deployment and sit here. We won't have any bonuses against this this elk. But yeah, you have to like click this just to... I just feel like I have one unit. I just wish it automatically defaulted to movement and attack, rather than require me to be in the menu, click on the unit, 
and then uh, then actually do the attacker movement order. So I got to click X there and then do it. It's just one extra click, I feel, but it's too many clicks. It could be a little smoother, yeah. So we took a lot more damage there than we've been taking, and that was because we didn't have any bonuses, guys. You know, we didn't have the the height bonus or anything like that. So we're finally gonna get off this hill, though we do have an event here. The seed of an idea. Yesterday, the tribe came across a vast tract of wild grain, the stalk swaying in the breeze like the wind playing over golden waters. The ground down grain could feed the tribe twice over, but one of the tribal elders had another idea. Instead of pounding the seeds into flour, she suggests planting half of them so that the grasses may return next summer. It is a curious idea, at odds with the nomadic life, but perhaps a harbinger of the future. What should you do? So again, we can get that 25% uh, re re reduction of the research cost for the, the domestication, or you can get the plus two food on city and outposts. And so that's pretty useful because that sticks with you the whole game. It's just plus two food on all your cities. So both of these are good choices. I think we're going to actually go with the food in this particular case. What do you know, old lady? I'm hungry now. <laughs> Because there's there's several ways to get that domestication research cost reduction. So you know what? Let's go for this, the grind. Now some of these do have additional effects, but they'll tell you if they do. They'll have a little thing that says, you know, that this can have additional effects. In this case, it doesn't really matter. We're only going for the bonuses down there. You can roleplay if you want, but we're going to just go by what the bonuses are. Let's go and get this science. Again, we have not been lucky on the science in this playthrough, unfortunately. Moving kind of slow in that regard. Been known to fight a lot of animals, though. I guess there's that. We're going to be warriors. Yeah. And we got a notification here. So it looks like somebody has discovered one of the natural wonders. Those get you some influence, so that's pretty helpful to have. So we're going to go ahead and raid this sanctuary, guys. And the way you do this is with the ransack. So we're just going to get that raided. And as far as where we want to set up our first settlement, there are no resources anywhere. Just up here. This is a really bad start, guys. Of course, it would be where yeah. we plop down. When I did my little test playthrough, I had an awesome location, of course. And uh, there's nowhere here that has any resources. Like, no uh, luxury resources. Up here, you've got the two strategic resources. But that's it. And if you, you settle there, I mean, there's no, again, there's no luxury resources. And so this is a, a terrible start. But again, what's nice is you're not committed to set up anywhere. Unlike in Civilization. Like, we might want to claim this area over here just because it's got the strategic resources. But it could end up being really far from where we set up our main city, so. Yeah, because there's not really much up here. No. Yeah, there's not really anything. It's just these two strategic resources. But we could build an outpost here. I don't know if I'd want that to be our first outpost, though, because your first outpost should probably be where you want to set up your first city. And yeah, just not finding much of anything. Over here we got some silver, but it's in the icy, snowy area, so... Not exactly a great location either. Guess we're going to be snow people. Yeah, so far it's it's been pretty bad, guys. As all Let's Plays are. What is that down there? Marble? Uh, yes. So that's the kind of stuff we need. We need these type of resources, guys. Guess we're gonna have to fight her. <laughs> I actually don't want to start stuff with her because she's really nice. Oh, is that the heart chick? I think so. If this is who I think it is. Yeah, I put a heart on her because she, she really is friendly. Oh. And she's got all the resources. <laughs> Of course she does. Yeah, you see how she's got like all these resources down here? Which is probably why she claimed that zone. So even though she claimed that area, she doesn't mind you walking through it? She doesn't have any rights to it. Oh, it's I just see. a claim. And so what we could do with this army here is go to her outpost and then ransack it exactly as we ransack that sanctuary. <laughs> and then it's not hers anymore. And she doesn't get mad about it? Oh, well, she'll get mad about it, but <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to be happy. But I'm saying it doesn't really matter. 
There's nothing uh, she can really do about it besides attack us back. So I'm tempted to leave this unit here for setting up a second outpost. Yeah, I think we might end up doing that, guys. Can't go across the water yet. But yeah, we have to find a, a place for our first outpost. But just overall, so far, this hasn't been going as well as I would like. And I think we're going to start moving back down because we do not want to be in this cold area anyways. So let's go and start moving this way. And there's a mammoth. I'm going to ride him. <laughs> we only need a little bit more food to get another unit here. But yeah, so far, again, it's going pretty poorly. Let's just skip for now. And I always miss those notifications. That's another thing I wish they would do. Put the notifications in a little bit more, I don't know, an area where you see it. So easy to miss it. Should be over there on the right side all the time, I feel. Because a lot of times those are really important, those notifications. Is that that tiny rectangle down there? Yeah. Yep, there's nothing there now. But yeah, when we have it, it's just really easy to miss stuff. Science. We got more science. Um, we, um, we've um, got um. the 10 of the 15 that we needed there. Yeah, so far I haven't found anywhere decent to settle yet, guys. Outside of her territory. <laughs> I really like this place. She should be accommodating <laughs> her guests. And so we could set up this outpost here to get these resources... I don't know that it's worth it, though. I mean, there's there's a lot of open territory here. But again, there's nothing here. There's no goodies. And I find the luxury resources to be really important in this game. And part of this is because of the, one of the settings I had where we didn't have it set up so that the luxury resources were spread out equally. We made it uh, a natural setting. So they can kind of just be spread out very randomly. So some places might have a lot of natural resources, while other places have none. And clearly, we're in that none area. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have fun. So, is what it is. It's a let's play, guys, so exactly what I expected. Now, you'll notice that we move really slow when we get onto the river, whenever we cross it. You know, it takes up all your movement points, you know, trying to move across the river, as you typically see in these type of games until you get ridges. But what I like is that you can then move down the river normally. It's like you're uh, on a raft, basically. And so we don't take a bunch of movement points now going down this river. I don't think I've seen that in any of these other games. Yeah, where they stick to the rivers. Yeah, you can stick to the river and keep moving down it and not uh, cost too many movement points. Yeah, this is a terrible map, guys. Yeah, she is the... This is the heart lady. I kind of like her, so... What's up, neighbor? We could fight her. Maybe she'll attack us. <laughs> you never know. If she attacks us, then I'm going to go... That's all my yeah, donkey Kong. Then I'm going to go raid her stuff. Yeah, I really don't think we should stay here, guys. Maybe start moving down that way. Yeah, because it doesn't seem like there's anything over here. There's no resources, that's for sure. But we're starting to get close to when we need to be settling down soon, so I'm getting a little concerned. I think other people are settling down, yeah. You can see that... Somebody just chose the Babylonian culture. I don't know how many of them have chosen cultures. Let's take a look and see just how far behind we are. Because we don't want to get where we can't get, where we have no choices. So it looks like that was the first culture that was chosen. So we're not that far behind. But these are all the, the starting cultures in the ancient era. I think there's exactly 10. So that's the most uh, civilizations you can have in a playthrough. And so there's one for everybody. And so, like, if you're the last one to pick a culture, then you don't get a choice, essentially. And so, yeah, some of these are much better than others. All of them are viable, I think, but there's some that are significantly better. And you can see what she gets. This is a science one. Science ones are pretty good to go for in the beginning. And this is what she's getting as a, the Babylonians. Is that what she picked, or is that what someone else picked? That's what not the heart lady picked. Oh. Somebody else picked. Who also has pink. So we now have another tribe here, so, you so that's good. you have the good. same colors? No, you can't. Oh. It's just two different uh, pinks. Oh, gotcha. I chose all those, but uh, there's not a lot of colors. There's like, I don't know, 13 or 14 colors, so you know there's not a lot of variety there. Uh, so we need to split these off. And have them explore in another direction. I 
feel like there should be science at the hot springs. There's a lot to discover there. Can we go? Oh, this is like a okay. I didn't notice that. Valley. Yeah, so we need to go up this way. Some more food over here. Another mammoth as well. And she didn't attack us. Again, it's kind of based on you know their tendencies, and and she's overall pretty friendly. You a bear. You see a bear? Oh, yep, there's a bear. He's guarding the science. He's guarding the science. It's Smokey the bear. He knows human beings go for the science. No more science. So we'll go for this one. I'm not excited about exploring the snowy area, but uh, we do have an adventure. Your scout comes to you, breathless from exertion. Between gasps, he tells you that he spied another tribe not far ahead. He leads you on, then after giving a stop signal, you drop to your bellies and crawl forward in the brush. Ahead, a young woman, no more than 13 summers, is leading a ceremony. Her audience, a dozen or so equally young or younger tribesmen. Many are crying, and when you see the bodies laid out, you understand they are in mourning. You know what you must do. So our two options here are to welcome them or to withdraw. If we withdraw, then we're, we're basically terrified, so we get the swift. We're going to run super fast from these people because we're afraid of sickness, and so it speeds up the unit. Well, this one here would give us a new hunting party. So. We need to save the children. So you notice down below that it says chances of triggering another narrative event. Well, I happen to know what this narrative event is. These people are sick. Oh, are they? And so you get the additional tribe unit, but then the tribe unit that accepted them all gets sick and dies. Oh. So you lose a unit. So there's just a chance of that? You don't know the odds. I mean, I've never seen it not fire oh, the couple okay. times I picked it, so... <laughs> We're going to go with this and just take the faster We're going to run away. We're going to run. <laughs> Get the hell out of there. I don't we're know who got gonna it. We're not going to save the sick we're babies. Not, we're not saving the sick babies. We're awful. I don't know who it was that got it. It, it was these guys here. Was it them? Are they sick? Is she sick? <laughs> she's, got a, she's got some type of disease, guys. you got to get out of here. Oh, she's going for the science. All right, so there's just Time a battle there. The first battle? Oh. I bet you're absolutely dying. To she attacked us. Really? She did. Wow. So rude. Okay. So, uh, hmm. I We're, thought she was friendly. Yeah, I thought so too. But she very much did attack us. And there's not really any bonuses here, but I'm not willing to just run. So we're just going to see what happens here, guys. And uh, since it's completely equal, nobody will have any train bonuses or combat bonuses. Uh, basically, it's kind of just up to the luck of the draw. So we're going to lose because <laughs> we're in a let's play. Well, one issue here is if we want to protect our flag, yeah, I guess that's a problem. If we want to protect our flag, then we have to take the penalty of being below, which means we would lose. So we're going to have to go here and then hope she doesn't just wrap around us and take the flag. She's going to do it. We'll see. I think she'll run up and attack us. Yeah, she did. So we took a little less damage than she did. I guess there's that. All right, so let's see. Do we want to attack her? It would be basically be the equal. So I think we should just defend and let her attack us. And there's a good chance that, yeah, look at how much more damage she took than we did. So she's the attacker, so the initiative is on her. But as a defender, she can just walk behind us and take that flag if she wanted to. Uh, but yeah, let's just let her keep on attacking us. And we should be able to win this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take that place that she has. <laughs> she attacked me. For so. reals. She started it. It's only fair. We thought you were nice. So yeah, we won that. And uh, we got a event about the battle. I can't do it through here, apparently. Okay, it was an event. I think it was just showing us that we had the battle. The battle of Dombai. So we're going to want to move up to wherever her thing is, her outpost. I don't know where it's at because we didn't locate it. Maybe somewhere around here. And then we're going to go ransack it. And maybe we'll build our own outpost. I don't know. It's the only place around here that's decent so far. Let's get that food. And uh, we found somebody else's outpost as well. I think that's Boudica. So Boudica's nearby. Is she aggressive? Uh, not the most aggressive, but uh, certainly more aggressive than the person who just attacked us. So uh, we might see these guys get attacked too. 
I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> These ladies are not nice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go over here. We could also retreat. Technically, we are in her territory in this case. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we're in her territory, so we'll see what she does. We're just wandering. She went off the other way. But now i got to go towards her to get that science. And then she's going to be like, that's my science. And there we did. We got it. So we got the knowledge star. So at this point, we can now move to the next era if we wanted to and pick our culture. But if we stay in this era, then we can get additional bonuses and we can get that fame. Which is a nice way of kind of setting you up in the lead. And frankly, we couldn't move to the next era anyways. Or at least we couldn't set up our city because we don't have an outpost yet. Uh, but once you get that first star, you can then pick your tribe's legacy. You stand at a crossroads. For many moons, the tribe has trekked the wilderness, slowly, torturously, learning the secrets of this world, how the materials hidden in the deep places and in plain sight might be fashioned to the tribe's advantage, how the beasts and plants of the lands and seas can be most fruitfully harvested, and how myths and stories can glacially but inescapably give power over our greatest enemies, other tribes. Now you must decide in what domain the tribe will truly sharpen its knowledge for the ages to come. Will you be renowned as makers, farmers, or charmers? So this bonus that you pick will stick with you for the rest of the game. So we can either get a plus one industry per population on city or outpost, a plus one food, or a plus one science. Remember, that's per population, so it's pretty beneficial. I always like the science. Now, science is not as important as this game because of the, the fame system as it is in, say, Civilization, where science is everything. Uh, but I, I find that no matter what, science is going to be pretty important because as you get new texts, they unlock you know, all kinds of new bonuses. And you're a storyteller. I'm also a storyteller. <laughs> Food is also incredibly powerful in this game, too, though. So that should be noted. Uh, production seems to be pretty easy to get. Uh, we're going to go with the storytellers. And yes, as Jinx said, I'm a storyteller. He likes to talk. I like to talk. <laughs> if y'all didn't know, you guys are like, they, they know better than anybody. If the kids don't want to go to bed, they get them started on history. Yeah, they'll get me started in politics or history or something like that. Hey, we found some ponies. Yeah, right around when it's bedtime. Like, we're eating late. And so, like, after dinner, they're going to have to start getting ready for bed. And then, yep, they just get me talking. They know what to do. <laughs> Let me take a look at what these notifications are. Uh, it looks like two more cultures were chosen. Oh, she chose the Egyptians. So she is in the next age now. The heart chick? Yeah, we're just calling her the heart chick because I don't remember who it is. So, yeah, we are falling behind, my friends. So we really need to get somewhere established. And she now has a city, so we can't just... I don't think we can just oh, ransack man. it now. I don't know that it's that simple. And she'll have scouts who can easily defeat our hunting party. So I don't know if we want to... We're just some little tribal peoples now. I don't know if we want to tango with her. This woman's going to be a problem. Yeah, and she's got all the resources, too. Look at all these wow. goodies. Wow. She's got everything down here. Wow. So yeah, we can move into the next era. So yeah, not going well, guys, unfortunately. Just because we haven't found a good location yet. We're probably not going to get very many choices when it comes to who we can, you know, be as a culture. Because again, there just isn't, there's nothing exciting. Might just have to just take a subpar location. And then conquer all the stuff we need. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm not finding anything, guys. Maybe you can set up over here where these ponies are. You're going to turn us into the bad guys. Yeah, you give me nothing. It's not not our fault. You took all the goodies and didn't leave anything for anybody else. Yep. Uh, it's not going to be my fault when I start getting aggressive. So we're going to ransack that sanctuary, guys. Now, one bonus of not ending it is that each of these units will turn into a scout. And so you can keep building up your future army, basically. Now they're scouts. Which so apparently we're going to need... There's Memphis, but as you can see, we cannot attack it. So, those are some beautiful buildings you got there, lady. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I really feel like we're gonna have to set up a settlement here, guys. I kind of feel like down here is the place to be, though. 
Yeah, it seems like that's where the start of the goodies are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be close to her, which I was going to be friends with her, but she's got too much, I feel. So we might need to take some of that. Well, that now is just rude. And she attacked us. She got aggressive first. Let's be clear about what happened here, guys. Let's see. Where do we want this guy to go? Guess we'll have him go this way. We have not fought very many animals, unfortunately. We were going, we were doing great in the beginning, and then it's just kind of, as I said, just went downhill with no luck. I don't think there's much left. <laughs> we're going to be the last ones to go to the next stage. Dang. Yeah. So we really do need to move soon. I'm trying to get the the points for either getting enough units or, uh, you know, to get those fame points. But, yeah, I just don't think yeah, it's going to happen, guys. Seems like there's too many that we need. Yeah, we actually need to go up here and get that food. Yeah, we need three more units or to fight three more animals. And so, yeah, I just don't think it's going to happen here, guys. Because we're not finding animals. But we did find a good place to settle down. I think this is where we should settle. We got ebony. We got papyrus. There's some ponies right there. So I think we're going to explore this little region here and probably set up here, guys. I think that's our best uh, choice so far. And up here in the north, I mean, you got a rival here as well. So no matter what, you gotta you got to compete with somebody. So oh, More science here. We can grab that. Are the mammoths any more difficult than the elk? Yeah, quite a bit more difficult. They're better than our units. I see. Basically, you need two units. That's the reason why I haven't fought them. That makes sense. You kind of need two uh, tribal units in order to defeat the the mammoths. And where are they going down here? Yeah, I guess we're going to have them go down here. But yeah, we really should have set up already. This will get us another unit here to explore this area a little bit quicker so that we can try and figure out exactly where we want to set up this outpost here. We know it's going to be in this area. But where? Where exactly will it be? So this is a good zone right here. I really like this one. Because we're seeing in one tile, you see the little lines? Mm -hmm. That is one territory. And so you're claiming that entire territory. Oh, okay. So that's how it's marked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can build your outpost and thus your city anywhere in the territory. But it claims the whole thing. But it claims area. the whole thing. And so this is one territory with at least three resources. And it's next to the ponies. So I think this is it. This is the location. So now it's just a question of where do we want to settle? And uh, also, where does this place end? I suppose is the question, too. All right, so these guys, let's have them go. I'm trying to go around these mammoths here. So we'll just continue to explore and see if we can't grow them. Probably not, given the, the current size. But maybe we could do another battle here. We still need to do. We still need to do three more animal battles. I don't think we're going to get that accomplished since we're about to move to the next age here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do a manual battle here, and we're both going to be fighting on the river, so uh, no bonuses. Well, let me take that back. Actually, let's move here. That is not on the river, and so we will have the bonus that they'll they'll have the penalty of attacking while on the river. Uh, so we just want to defend and let them come after us. They'll take a lot of damage. You do not want to fight on a river if you can avoid it. You can see they get that river penalty. Oh, and looks like I defended. But it's fine. We won. That's what matters. Alright, so we got a little bit of food there, but yeah, I don't think that they're going to be able to get to the next level. We did get another event here, though. The battle is over, the tribe still alive, most still able to enjoy the warm caress of the midday sun and the cold bite of the morning frost. Yet you didn't come out of the encounter wholly unscathed. Several of the tribe carry nasty wounds, none more so than one of the young fighters you are most fond of. Deep in slumber, blood oozes from a deep gash to her neck. Such wounds usually end in death, but one of the elder's followers thinks he can heal her by applying a poultice of tree bark and plant leaf. What do you say? So if we treat it, then this will be her best hope. Or we can dismiss it and we'll just pray to the spirits and implore them to give her the strength to survive. 
Let's uh, treat it. Sounds like the smart way to do this. I don't think we've ever gotten that event before, though. So who's still got to move? Oh, yes. They have gotten that food, and thus we have another tribe member here. All right, excellent. We could go ahead and do a battle against a mammoth, but we'd have to do two more battles in order to achieve that fame marking. I don't think we would get there, guys. I guess we can move over here for now. There's another sanctuary over there as well. And there also is a notification here. Yeah, I doubt there's too many cultures left. Probably just the one. <laughs> We're not going to get a choice, but... That's nice. That's fine, guys. We'll just roll with whatever we uh, end up getting, I suppose. Uh, but we're getting a lot of these science points here, and you know those are useful for that influence, because the influence is what you use to set up the outpost. So we'll be able to set up our second outpost likely uh, immediately, which I think we should start moving over towards the ponies to get those before she does, because that neighbors her. And we're going to need ponies. So you know what? Let's go ahead and start moving over there now in preparation for the second outpost. Well, this tribe is just trying to see the borders here, and it looks like we did find them. Okay, there's something here, but I doubt we're going to want to put the settlement there. So let's go ahead and get our outpost set up, guys. So we're going to claim this territory. Now, you'll see that it marks the best location. That's just based on, like, the, the total resources you get. So if you added those up, that's uh, 23 resources. And that's just for all the areas that you unlock, because you work the areas around it. But it might not always be the best location, because you've got to consider other things as well, like uh, how defensive it is. Now, none of this zone is very defensive, so I don't think it really matters. There is a river here, so that means that we'll get the food. I think they're probably right in this case that that is where we're going to want to put it. But we'll kind of dip around and see if there's anywhere else. You can see there's not a huge difference with some of these. That's 22. But obviously you want to get as, as much as possible. But yeah, none of these are going to be better here. Because again, they, they do tell you the one that's going to give you the most. So yeah, we'll go to that one and found our first outpost. So that'll be, unfortunately, three turns because it's on a river. So it takes a turn to move there. But we can do this battle here. And thus, if we can just do one more battle within those three turns, then we can uh, get the other fame. So let's go ahead and do this, guys. Yeah. So you can see that uh, we are now more powerful since we have two units. And let's go ahead and end deployment here. And we're also uphill. So we'll be able to attack down. Although, you can't attack from here because it's a cliff, so we're just going to want to defend then, I think and let him come up the hill. So he'll do more damage than the uh, the elk, since he's a lot more powerful. All right, so let's go ahead and have this unit here attack down the hill. And then this unit will just chill out. It might rotate the units. Yeah. Let the other one get some experience. Experience is a thing, guys. So let's let these guys move over here. And then these guys will move like so. And that should kill them, right? Yep. So we took out the mammoth. Got all his food. Got his fur. So yeah, we're already towards getting the, the next unit, which remember, we only need to get one more unit, and then we got that fame too. So we could really start out with a lot of fame here. I still don't know that it would be worth it uh, spending this much time in the Neolithic period, though. We spent far too much time, guys. But still, at least we have something to kind of justify it. Wasn't a complete waste of time if we get the fame. All right, so we're just waiting for them. Oh, and these guys are wrapped around this way. Okay. So I think we got one more turn. But yeah, she's the, the Egyptians. So we got the Egyptians just north of us. I guess we can get... We should probably just split these two up. Uh, I think they might split the food, though. I'm not entirely sure how that'd work. So let's go to the sanctuary to get the food. I'm not sure if you get five or ten here from the sanctuary. Probably just the... Yeah, just the five, so that won't be enough. 
All right, so that's a shame. I was hoping we get those last two fame. Maybe we might want to wait to go to the next area until we do get Got a ton enough. of science. Yeah, yeah, we're doing good with the science. That's getting us all that uh, influence. Again, we have some nice bonuses here by keeping keeping it going, but it's just not worth it. Not this far. And I think there's probably not going to be any cultures left. Yeah, two people just picked culture. <laughs> so we're just going to get stuck with whatever's left, basically. It's fine. It is what it is. Yeah, we'll get this. But man, we just need five more food. <laughs> if we could just find five more food here. And uh, one more animal, then we'd get that bonus. These guys need 20 more food, so that's not happening. Hmm. I want to see if there's anything here, like food. There's one right there. Maybe we should have that unit. How long would it take for them to get up here? Five turns. Let's take a look. Three. That'd be a lot, considering how behind we already are. Hmm. I'm going to leave it there, though, guys. I'd rather have them get it. There's another food down there. Oh, you found another one? I guess I didn't see it. It had just popped up as the screen was moving away. Where is it? Oh, yep. Another one right there. So where are we at on settling this outpost? Looks like we just got it started. All right, excellent. So yeah, we might want to go ahead and set up our our city now and our uh, our culture and all that. Yeah, we already saw that notification. All right, so... Who could use the food the most? Doesn't matter, neither one have any food. All right, so we got an event here, the Fungal Hoarder. The shift to fixed abodes hadn't been easy for the tribesmen and women who'd settled in the outposts, but they'd persevered and now thought of the land as home. When they discovered that one of their number had been hoarding mushrooms that he'd found in a nearby cave for himself, it was a great blow to the spirit of the tribe. Now they want to banish him for his greed, but that would mean being deprived of the location of the mushroom field. What is your reckoning? So we can banish him, get that 25% on city defense research costs. We can protect him, and then we'll get the bountiful, so plus five food. Doesn't really help him until they form into a city, though. Or we can retain him, and then we just get the plus two science. Okay, so that's probably the least beneficial. Let's get the research bonus, because we haven't really got many research bonuses yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can't get these guys their last bit of food here, or a, or a battle of some sort. I don't remember where it was at. Was it right here? I guess this is the way to go regardless. Yeah, I don't think we're going to wait, guys. Then we'll have, I'm trying to get these guys moving. Have them select that. And I don't know if there's any reason to adopt the culture without the city, which we won't have until two turns. So we could keep on going, I suppose, because that's really what's key. If she attacked us with that scout, she'd wipe us out. We would not even be able to contend with her. Because we're just little old tribal peoples. I guess we'll go this way. Explore to her east. And then... I guess we've already explored everything around here, huh? Yeah, pretty suppose much. suppose we'll go further to the west. Lots of cliffs in this area, guys. As we've seen. Oh, we got some more science. Again, doing pretty good in that area. So basically one more turn, guys. And then we'll go ahead and get the culture. And then I suppose we could, let's see where that food is. Is, is it still up here? Is it gone? Somebody gobbled it. Aw, oh, damn. So we moved it up here just for that food. Oh, it's there. There we go. <laughs> so we got that fame. If she attacked us, she'd be in trouble. Even with those better scouts, she would not be able to uh, defeat us here. And then I guess these guys can move and get that food. And almost got another unit here, but I don't think it's worth waiting if we already have the uh, the settlement. 
Now you have to do all this anyways. Because, uh, oh, we still have another turn anyways. But it takes one culture, or excuse me, one turn to establish your culture. So let's go ahead and have one of these guys come down here. Or actually, that's right. We're going to set up another outpost here, aren't we? Oh, yeah, to get the ponies. Yep. To secure this location. It's saying this is the best place here. But again, you do have to, de to look at uh, defense. That's not the most defensive, but it is 20. It's not going to get much better than that. That's 22, though. Not 22, but it's 20 as well. More production than food. I think we will settle here. Just I like putting them up on the, the hill here. And we'll be right next to her territory, too. So <laughs> We can keep an eye on her city. Harassing her. But again, she can take this outpost from us until it's part of a city. In which case, then you have to go to war. Alright, so I guess we're going to get her culture, guys. We could... Wait one more turn, since we don't have the outpost yet, and that'll allow us to get one more unit here. Yeah, not much going on there that you gotta wait for. I don't know if one scout unit's gonna be worth it, waiting a whole nother turn. Yeah. Unless we can battle an animal. Nothing but mammoths wandering around. Yeah, all the deer are gone. Yeah, I guess we'll do it one more time. So we got our outpost, guys. Of course, is keeping it. And so now we'll do it. We'll move all our units. Then we'll select our culture. And then it'll be one more turn to get that culture, you know, secured. At which point we can then set up the, the first city. But yeah, this is the longest I've ever taken to do this, so pretty bad. <laughs> So we'll see how things work, but the, the main bonus of awaiting the one day here is we now have the, the two units here, and all these do automatically become scout units as well. And so let's go ahead and get that culture selected, guys. And we're, we're only going to have the one choice because we're the last ones. So we're going to be Assyrians, which is a uh, expansion culture, I think. Well, good, because we're going to have to expand. Yeah, I think that's the expansion one, if I'm not mistaken. Because, yeah, these are the stability ones. That's the money one. And that's also stability. Money. Or, you know what? These might actually be influence rather than stability. And then that's a warfare one, a military one. The Hittites and the Mycenaeans. The Harappans are food. Egyptians are industry. And the Babylonians are science. So we'll be focused on expansion. And uh, the bonus here that we get, let me get to that, uh, Raid Masters. So we get this for the rest of the game. So as you evolve, each culture will give you one bonus that you keep. And so this Raid Masters will increase our land movement speed for every unit. So our units are going to be faster for the rest of the game. And we're also going to get plus five combat strength bonus when ransacking. Because we're raiders. So I suppose that fits with the way we've been playing. <laughs> We also get a unique building here, which grants us some influence, district fortification. So it's like a it's a garrison unit. Uh, it counts as both a garrison and a commons quarter, actually. And then uh, two plus combat strength and combat for units in or adjacent to the district. So not the most useful specialized building, but that's what we'll have. And then we'll also have the Assyrian raiders, which means we have to get those ponies. So it's good that we we secured those. And so they're pillagers. They generate additional money when destroying an outpost or independent camp. So it looks like we're going to have to raid some Egyptians as the Assyrians. Very fitting, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even mad about being Assyrian. Uh, but your clothes will be based on you know the, the time period and the culture that you select. So our clothes change throughout the game. Oh, I thought that was kind of a cool feature. And so again, it takes one turn to adapt that culture. We're probably going to want to leave this guy on here since it's not going to be our first city, until we uh, attach it to a city, because I think she'll just end up raiding us. And so let's just put these guys on the station order for now, so at least somebody's defending it, so she'll have to fight us. And then these guys, we're going to want to split them. Split them up here. And then have 
them go get that science while they still can. And then I think that's good. So these guys will go over this way. Although I suppose there's not really anything to get up along these cliffs, huh? Not really. It just kind of loops back into your territory. Yeah. I suppose it'd be better to go this way. I wrap around this little lake here. And then what we can do is have these guys come down this way. Kind of explore up along this sea zone here. And, oh yes, we have these three units. I say let's battle. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, she attacked us first. We're not the bad guys here. But yeah, we could have waited until we were, you know, not uh, just tribal units. We could wait till next turn to be scouts. But she could be gone by that point. So let's not. So let's go ahead and do a uh, manual battle. And then we'll want to make sure that she can't get any attack bonuses here. Like, this is not a good location for these guys here. Let's move them over here. And that looks pretty good. So let's enter deployment. And then what we want to do, oops, let's move these guys over here, because you get a bonus bit next to each other. Well, it depends on the units. But surrounding them can have some bonuses. Again, the controls throw me off a little bit here, guys. But you can see that uh, because we have the friendly units, we're getting a plus two. Then we also get the plus four from high ground, while she gets the plus two from defending. Fire. And she has higher combat strength, since she's a you know, higher attack level here. Yeah, we outnumber her. Probably don't want to attack with these guys, though. Yeah, they don't. Look like they'll have a good time with that. So we'll just defend with these two units. Let her attack us. Still took more damage since we had the plus two from defending. And so now let's give these guys an order to attack down the hill. Do that damage to her. I wonder if they can attack from this location. I think they can. So we want to move over here and then attack. Yeah, that'd make a lot of sense. I didn't realize they can attack from that location. And she's still standing in it. <laughs> okay. She's got heart. She's got heart, guys. But she's dead. All right, so we won our second battle against her. All right, excellent. And there might be something there that we might be able to get next turn. Despite all your efforts, the fighter never woke from her slumber. Her life force slowly slipped away over several days, and now her body lies cold. There is nothing more to do than perform the last rites and forget this bleak day. <sighs> Maybe we should have prayed for her. I don't know. Damn it. There are uh, different results that can happen. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. So now, we advance as the warlike Assyrians. You're not going to be a very nice neighbor, are you? We are not going to be a very <laughs> nice neighbor. So we are the Syrians, so we, you see we changed our look here. And uh, all of those units have become the scout units. I was trying to look at those. And so we can see that they are much better combat-wise. Of course, they are just scouts. Our job was just to explore the map. But now we need to establish our first city. And we already know that that's going to be over here. And so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we evolve our outpost to the city, which your first city is free. They're impressive, the Egyptians. It's a fair bet that you'll be embarrassed if you compare cities with them. Wow, really? That's, <laughs> that's how they started with us, huh? So we need to decide what we want to construct in our first city, which is named Assur, since we're the Assyrians. So we do the pottery workshop for more influence, which is what we might want to do. And that is infrastructure. So it's built within the city. If we were to say build a farmer's quarter or a maker's quarter, then you actually place that on the map. And then it's increasing the zones that you're working. 
So very different from the uh, Civilization series. Where population is inside the cities, we can see that up, oops, up here at the top. This is where your population is. I don't know if we can expand this at all. Maybe because we don't have any population here just yet. Yeah, we have zero population. But eventually you will assign the population to each of these areas up here rather than on the map. So it's, uh, it's different from the Civilization series, so it might confuse some of y'all who are more familiar with that. Can build our unique building. I think it'd probably better do the pottery workshop though, because you get it much quicker and uh, it gives a bit more influence. So we're gonna do that because we'll need a lot of influence because that's what you use for establishing outposts and cities. So we'll get that first and that'll take us uh, three turns. Now when you build units, it does require population. That was something I, I never really liked about uh, the Civilization series where only settlers required a population. I feel like everybody should. You're taking somebody from within the city and making them into a unit. And so it should have a disadvantage for military countries that have large armies. Their population should be out there fighting rather than in the city building. Yeah, that makes sense. And so we could bring these scouts over here to start harassing her. <laughs> that would be an option. Start you getting really ready. took that personal. Start getting ready for war. Let me just see who has the experience. I want to use a more experienced unit. Yeah, it looks like these guys are. Though it does make more sense to take her out early. It does. Because you know she's going to be a problem. Well, and we're and Syrians. We goodies. We're Syrians. We got to raid, Jinx. Goodies. We're raiders. Refrigerator raiders, specifically. <laughs> I'm going to raid the crap out of your fridge. Don't tell me they didn't have fridges back then. You don't know. I bet they did. They actually did. The Romans had fridges. Some ice in the basement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we still can't go in water yet. It requires a certain tech, but we've uncovered all this area here. And uh, we need to figure out where we want to set up our next outpost. Is this one set up yet? No. Two more turns. And so we'll be able to attach that to our city. I'll be showing that next episode since, unfortunately, this episode is over, guys. We're just going to finish up all the stuff we have to do here. Just moving these units and then we'll be selecting our first tank and we're gonna raid the crap out of the sanctuary. So now when you raid these, instead of getting food, you get gold. And so we don't have any gold, guys. You can see we got zero gold, we get two return. We need gold, my friends. All right, so there is a text screen. Select that with triangle and the only tech we sped up was city defense. And so we didn't really speed up much uh, in the Neolithic period. And so if you select the, uh, the touchpad, then you can kind of move around here and see what each of these do. So this gets us our warriors, the palisades, the walls, and the garrison. To get our Assyrian raiders and to take advantage of those horses, we have to get domestication. That also gets the animal barns. But if we want to take advantage of those luxury resources, we need the artisan, the artisan quarters. So, and it gets the granary too. And we do have luxury resources with the ebony and the incense. So both of those would be good to get, guys. I feel like ponies are more important than calendars. <laughs> Jinx wants ponies. I don't even know what day it is today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is our unique unit. And you can't get the animal barn, so that's more food. But this gives you the granary. I guess we'll get the domestication because it's our unique unit. And we got ponies nearby. So we'll start with that, guys. All right. So unfortunately, that is going to be the end of today's episode. So as expansionists, we do have one special ability. You know, we'll have to take a look at that next episode. Everybody has a, a special ability. We'll take a look at that in the next episode. But I hope you guys enjoyed this first one. If you did, make sure you have a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. do hope to see you guys on the next one, which should be uh, the very next day. So we'll have this out. This one will be out probably early Thursday morning, and so we should have one on Friday. Uh, if you're looking for any links, check out the uh, description of any of our videos. Find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. 
I also find a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, find links to all of our social media if you'd like to follow us on those. If you're looking for anything else to watch while you wait for episode two, then check out the front page of our channel. We've got a ton of videos, all sort of by genre. We play a lot of strategy games, both on console and PC. So you should be able to find something that you'd enjoy. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on episode two. And thanks for watching.